the rumors surrounding The Last of Us Part 3 have been omnipresent since, uh, basically since The Last of Us Part 1. Pretty much since the first game came out, people are like, okay, well, what's the fourth game going to look like? What's the seventh game going to look like? And it's been kind of framed by some statements that, like, Neil Druckmann has made previously um, and some of the other writers, like uh, Haley, I forget her last name, but she's discussed it. And they've said things like, The Last of Us is the story of Joel and Ellie. So there isn't really a version of The Last of Us that would disinclude them. They would always be present in the conversation. And I think that that makes sense. I agree. Like, I'm not particularly interested in a version of The Last of Us where they just go with a totally separate character. Some people are like, I want to see the world of The Last of Us from the perspective of somebody in the UK, which I agree could be interesting, you know, to see what it would be like to run through London as a survivor in this universe. But how is that? I think it would just turn into another kind of generic zombie movie or, or game. Like, I don't think it would really work because the what separates The Last of Us is the story and the relationship between Joel and Ellie. It's not necessarily that they're zombies. Yes, these zombies and infected are different than those you might see in other zombie universes and lore. But I'm just again, I'm not sure if it would if it would work the same way. So the discussions of The Last of Us Part Three have been around for a while. People are wondering how they could do this. And there, there are some potential things. There's been some leaks and speculation, of course. No shocker there. This is a collection of information from Game Rant that they published in July of last year. Since then, there's been some other rumors and things, but nothing concrete, really, other than um, Naughty Dog saying, yeah, we're working on a couple of single-player games. And Neil Druckmann's working on something. There's rumors they're working on a totally new IP. As for whether that happens or not, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. That rhymed. Totally intentional. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just up in the air right now. People are kind of curious where this lands. As for exactly what we're looking at, they say, from the moment that The Last of Us Part Two hit store shelves, video game journalists have been asking Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann whether there will be a Last of Us Part Three or not. And for years now, Druckmann has played his cards very close to his chest. With the recent success of HBO's The Last of Us, questions about a hypothetical Last of Us Part Three have naturally resurfaced. And according to Druckmann's latest statements, while Naughty Dog is quote unquote open to developing a sequel, it isn't currently in active development, but according to some recent leaks, that might not be entirely true. They continue to kind of break these down. Over the weekend, a new set of The Last of Us Part 3 leaks appeared online. Shocker. Posted on the leaker's Patreon, Daniel RPK made several big claims that The Last of Us Part 3's alleged story and cast of characters, about the, the alleged cast of characters and story. According to Daniel, The Last of Us Part 3 will focus on a completely new group of survivor for at least part of its new story. The group of five scavengers will reportedly be based in an old Victorian house on the outskirts of a devastated city. Daniel also went into some detail about these supposed new characters. The first new character is Lucas, a friendly, kind-mannered survivor that will apparently end up turning a little darker throughout the game after he develops a relationship with the younger scavenger in the group. Val uh, will apparently be the leader of the house, uh, though Ezra seeks to take control for himself. Mason is a former soldier, though the leak doesn't specify which military faction he belonged to, such as Fedra or the WLF. Mason is torn between his loyalty to Ezra and what he believes to be the best for the house as a whole. And the final character mentioned in the leak is Gracie, with only her age of 18 to 25 being noted. This is interesting. While they say, like, through part of the story, um, you know, a new group of survivors through at least part of the story, with Neil Druckmann's interest in changing perspectives in these stories, I would bet good money that this is going to be one of those games where, like, you play through half of it, and then all of a sudden, like, the house is being invaded by somebody, and then the big reveal is that, oh, it's it's actually Joel and Tommy, and they're clearing the house out because they're working with a, a raider group, and it turns out this is a prequel, and you didn't even realize it. Or it just shows up, and it's it's Joel and Ellie, and you didn't even realize it. But then, like, they break your brain, and it's like, oh, it's actually, it's actually that you thought they were the bad guys, but they're actually the good guys because you liked them in the other game when you played from their perspective. But in this game, they're the bad guys since you've gotten to know this other cast of characters better. And honestly, I think that will work if that's what they do way, way better than what they did in The Last of Us Part Two. The Last of Us Part Two made a, a little bitty mistake in thinking 
that the vast majority of people would be open to seeing the story from another perspective after watching that person with the new perspective bludgeon a beloved father figure to death. That I think was a little bit of a miscalculation. They thought that people would just go along with it. That's why I've said like thematically, The Last of Us Part Two is a really fascinating and cool game. In terms of execution, a little bit sloppy, pacing's all over the place, and no matter how successful they were in kind of pacing things out, there was always going to be a subset of people that just frankly didn't care how likable Abby could be because they had to watch her murder Joel. So I, I think this could be an interesting way of flipping it on its head. I think it would be coolest if there was something where they really spend time and they just straight up don't mention Joel, don't mention uh, Ellie at all. I don't know how they sell this without doing that, but maybe that's the thing. Maybe they just straight up say, nope, they're not in this game. It's a standalone kind of spinoff title. And halfway through the game, it's revealed that they actually are in the game because Naughty Dog has lied many times when promoting their games. Famously in the promotion of the original Last of Us Part 1, they said that uh, the only playable character was Joel. That ended up not being true. You could play as Ellie during the game, but it was an important thing because that reveal of playing as Ellie was a really cool moment. And then notably in The Last of Us Part Two, they had that trailer where they revealed Joel, where she uh, he puts his hand over Ellie's mouth. She turns around and says, what the hell are you doing here? You really think I let you do this on your own? Or whatever he said. And then you see Joel. Turns out that wasn't Joel. That was actually Jesse in the actual game. They just swapped the models and kind of lied to you um, and deceived you into thinking that Joel was in the later portions of the game. So... I don't think they would be opposed to telling people and the public and journalists, no, Joel and Ellie are not in the game. Tommy's not in the game. Abby's not in the game at all. Don't worry about it. And then they just like halfway through drop this bombshell on you that the bad guys you've been, you've been worried about the whole game are actually your beloved uh, characters. Could be really, really interesting. Could be really interesting to see how they, how they, explore that as they go on while that was the end of daniel's leak fellow leaker viewer anon took to twitter to claim that this was true they also claimed that ellie will be returning for part three stating that she will be quote unquote as important and quote as she was in the last of us part two whatever that means later on in the same thread viewer anon also mentioned that major filming for the game is happening this year referring to the title's alleged motion capture process though the motion capture process can vary wildly between different studios and projects it's often the case that the uh, motion capture stage is completed fairly on in the development for something as narrative driven as the last of us so if these rumors are true the last of us part three could still be um i think they meant fairly early on not fairly on, but anyway, yeah, it normally happens relatively early. If you remember like the trailers that they dropped for the last of us part two, let's just see when those were the original Abby trailer was from Paris games week, 2017. So this was October 30th, 2017. You guys remember this trailer and how good it looked. It still looks fantastic. But do you guys remember this? I I remember when people were wondering if this was actually Abby's mom or Ellie's mom, rather. Man, that sounds pretty stupid now, doesn't it? <laughs> was it? Nope. It was very different than that. Tell you what. <laughs> sure wasn't. Sure wasn't. But I remember when this trailer dropped, everybody had lost their minds. And what's interesting is that this sequence in the game is actually pretty far in. So it's not like they filmed and did the motion capture and polishing on the first sequence or the first hour of the game. This is pretty deep in. Can you, I also, I can we just appreciate the the chutzpah to do this for your trailer trying to promote your game how do we get people excited and wanting to give us money let's show a bunch of people getting brutally murdered and then uh in the course of trying to murder somebody else like it's just it's a ballsy move they are nested with sin nested with sin this is one of the reasons people thought that 
um, this was Ellie's mom. Because people saw her cutting in to her stomach. People were like, oh, so she's pregnant. still just outrageous how good this game looks like seriously it's outrageous bear in mind this was on the playstation 4 a device from 2013 <laughs> just let that sink in okay really really uh process that okay really process that um so when these trailers were dropping this was three years before the game would actually release and they not only had already done the motion capture they had like polished the ever living hell out of it and gotten this trailer done. The trailer looked awesome. Graphically, it looked really, really good. Like they really had, had gotten this thing settled. I think the ending version of this scene looked a little better, but not by much. Like they had done a lot of work on this thing. So if they are like doing motion capture for the last of us part three, or they were doing that last year, like last summer, last fall, it definitely would suggest that it's probably like 2025, 2026 at the soonest that we would actually get it. But maybe we start to see it promoted sooner than that. Who knows? They went on with it though, describing more of it. Let's see, of course, every leak should always be taken with a hefty pinch of salt. Though both Daniel and Viewer Non have correctly leaked and predicted past projects. It doesn't mean that these leaks are true. Even in Viewer Non's original tweet, they mentioned that The Last of Us Part 3 is still very early on in pre-production and that these story details could be uh, easily changed during development. Yeah, accurately leaked news in the past, double down on their claim that Neil Druckmann's next game is indeed The Last of Us Part Three, and has now gone as far as to say that major filming for the game will take place this year. They've also said that The Last of Us Part Two's protagonist, Ellie, is also um, at least as important in the third game. It, it again makes me wonder if they're gonna do the whole thing where it's just gonna be a matter of changing perspectives again, and it's all gonna be about these survivors and then flipping it where Ellie's the bad guy. Or maybe they just straight up go and try to make Ellie the hero again, and where the whole point is she's kind of giving her life to save humanity. Maybe that's how they tie it up. Like they say here, this post, um, now that The Last of Us Part Three is pretty much confirmed, what do you think could redeem the franchise? What do you think The Last of Us Three should cover? And uh, Ahsoka Solo, I see a lot of Ellie should die for the cure takes. And honestly, that's absolutely the worst outcome in my opinion. I want the opposite confirmation that Joel was right to save a child from a vague idea of maybe a cure that they never could have manufactured and dispersed anyway. Medical experimentation on children is bad. Saving your loved ones for, from murder is good. The, the first thing, I agree in the first game, this is the impression that they leave you with. The Fireflies are bumbling idiots who can't seem to do much of anything right, and they absolutely should not be trusted with medical experimentation on a child. Totes agree, my dudes. However, in part two, when we actually get to see the discussions between Abby's dad and the other doctors and the discussions with uh, Marlene and everything, they make it very clear that this will work, that they're, they're pretty confident this will work. So they kind of retconned it a little bit. And in the show, they also retcon it even more aggressively to basically having it be a pretty locked and loaded cure um, that this was going to work. So I think that they're going to uh, kind of retcon the story and canonically it will be more assured. Cause I agree. The voice tapes make it very, very clear that they're not sure this is going to work, but in the second game and in the show, they heavily suggest that this is going to work and it's just, Oh no, we were going to cure humanity and Joel screwed it up. Cause I think that just makes it easier to, to paint the, Joel was the bad guy, but for good reasons, probably. And that that kind of that parallel between Abby's behavior and then Ellie's behavior later, you know, that, that's the whole premise of the second game. So they had to make it a little bit more black and white. So I agree if we're just looking at the, the first game, this makes sense. But I think that they have intentionally tried to kind of rewrite the lore so that they can go a different direction with it. Shit, if they don't walk away from Abby, let's see if Abby would sit back and let Lev be murdered the way for her monster father said, oh wait, I let Lev be murdered the way her monster father said he would murder her. 
Meanwhile, Ellie ends up finding a doctor that takes blood draws from her for medical research. She otherwise lives her life, finally believing that she didn't deserve to die as a child and the zombie apocalypse isn't on her shoulders. I think it's a really unsatisfying ending. Perhaps it's the one that Ellie stands want the most. And may, I mean, maybe they do this like reversal where it's, it's about Abby and Lev and putting Abby in that position. But I feel like they already completed Abby's character arc over the course of the game. So I, I, and you know, Abby kind of the whole premise of that ending sequence in the epilogue where like straight up Abby is enslaved and starved and nearly killed, not just by the slavers, but also by Ellie. I feel like they wrote all of that so that Abby has received her punishment for killing Joel and then some like if being enslaved is not adequate punishment for something you absolutely regret, which Abby makes very clear. She is haunted by this and you know, nobody's sleeping well. Everybody's haunted by what they did in Jackson. You know, I don't know. I don't know what would, would do it <laughs> beyond that. You know, like I think they wrote it such that Abby's story has kind of come to an end. I don't, I, I'd be surprised if she's in the second game or the third game rather. They go on, the main character is a young person whose parents were murdered by Abby in part two. You go on a wild goose chase to hunt Abby down. I, I think that they wouldn't just try again that bluntly. I think that they'll try to learn from the mistakes and maybe do it a little bit more covertly. Like I said, where like they have the whole first half of the game is just a totally different group. You get to know and like and appreciate and you, you connect with, and then they bring in the reveal that you know, it's all about perspectives again. Maybe that's the premise of it. I'm not sure, but I think that would work a lot better than what they ended up doing. Do you think it should be a new character taking care of an elderly person um, to then find out it's Ellie who lived her life and now she's going to die of old age? They can use her body for a cure. Oh, that could be interesting. I'd also be interested in what is now a member like what that looks like long term. Like what does the universe of The Last of Us look like? say 30 40 years later is it a lot different is it the same is it just more chaotic i'm not sure that could be really interesting <laughs> billy can we not do that everyone is a bad person in someone else's eyes thing again yeah i feel like they kind of like everybody knows that that's what they were doing in the last Wars part two they just didn't like how they did it and i feel like if they tried to do it again maybe it works better maybe it's more impactful and it it actually works but i don't I don't know. I don't know if it actually works. I don't know. Or if they try to just do something totally different. Maybe they were like, okay, our big meta storytelling thing. It was a fun experiment, but people kind of hated us for it. So let's move on and try to just tie up loose ends and end the story of Ellie. Maybe that's what they're going to do. This person, CH215, Abby is infected by Ellie's blood, which cultures cordyceps. And she got some of when she bit her fingers off. She jumps out of the boat to save Lev and drowns. Credits roll. <laughs> if that had been in the first one, it would have been better. So, like, they just open the game with them in the boat driving to Catalina Island. And she realizes she's turning and just jumps out of the boat and drowns. And that's the whole game. It's like, it's three minutes long. That's the whole thing. That could be funny. <laughs> that, could, that could work. That could work. I do think that there is the potential for them to do something with like Ellie having infected Abby because she's she's bit. I don't think they ever clarified with David if that actually worked. Because you remember in the first game, she bites David and then uh, tells him you're infected because she's been infected. So it's not clear if it's it's also transmutable. And, and I think there was, forget like, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there were audio tapes saying Ellie still had like the fungus spreading in her brain, but it was altered and like heavily slowed. There was a video I made back in the day. There was a theory um, that the video was on. It was called like the the tumor theory of The Last of Us Part Two, And it was basically that the fungus was growing in Ellie's brain. It was just growing extremely slowly. And there's been stories throughout history of people that have tumors in their brain that alter their personality. And sometimes it can make you very aggressive. So before we got The Last of Us Part Two, some people were like, maybe part of the explanation for why... Ellie is going on a, a seemingly a murderous rampage is because the fungus has grown sufficiently enough that it's altering her her brain chemistry and how she thinks and acts and is turning her into a crazy person that just is hyper violent. And I thought that that was kind of an interesting thing, but she can't infect others. She stated she can't infect people talking to Dina in Seattle day one. Okay, okay. 
If that's true, Ellie can't kiss Dina. That's a good point. Or at least can't get too kinky. They can't bite each other or anything. They're very limited. So I guess that's a good point. They do kiss. So yeah, you're totally right. I guess they do establish that she can't infect others. See, this is why it's nice to have a chat. Because when I would have just like left a door open, like maybe she can. They just can like shut it down. Maybe it's different if she's specifically biting someone, but that seems arbitrary to be like, no, you can swap spit, but you can't bite. So yeah, that's a good point. So I guess they couldn't do that with Abby, but it's an interesting idea that they bite off the finger and then, you know, Abby has the infection and maybe, maybe they could do something weird where like now she spread her immunity to Abby. Maybe there's some BS like that. I don't know. I, don't know. I know everybody who's like, that's not how genetics work, Luke. That's not how immunities to diseases work. I know. But you know what also doesn't work that way? Funguses turning humans into zombies. Okay. it's it, it, We're talking about fiction. If they want to just make something up, they could do it. Okay. We're, let's just be clear. So all of this to, to go back to what we were initially saying, where do they go with The Last of Us Part 3? I'm honestly open to it. I still think The Last of Us Part 2 was unnecessary. I think they had created the story, the story arc of the characters. And I think if they had left it there, it would have been fine. I thought part two, if they were going to do it, probably shouldn't be part two. It should be like the last of us origins or the last of us, whatever they would call it. And it was going to be Joel and Tommy in the 20 years between Sarah's death and the opening of part one. I think that would have worked way better. I think that would have been an original story. You know, like you kind of can rest assured that Tommy and Joel are going to make it out of their situations okay because you know that they survive, but you could do a lot of really interesting stuff with that story. The difficulty with prequels, though, is exactly that. You know how it's going to end. You know that they're going to be okay. So there are very low stakes for that core cast of Joel and Tommy if they were to do that. Whereas if they were to go and do something in addition to The Last of Us Part Two, or with a totally new cast, then there's stakes, because you don't know if they survive or not. Um, and that could work a little bit better. At least keep the door open, where you're like, I don't know if this person's gonna die uh, or, or stay alive, you know? It's a big question mark. You just don't know yet. You don't know yet. Um, but now that they've done The Last of Us Part Two, now that that's happened, what should they do for Part Three? I think that's a very interesting question. I think it just depends on if they have an interesting idea for how they want to resolve the story of Ellie if they do because the the truth of the matter might be that they don't want to resolve it they do want to keep the world in chaos and they, that might just be what they do or they might try to just tie it up with a neat little bow and actually give Ellie some resolution probably in the world of the last of us it's probably not a happy ending it probably is one of those things where she finds a new group maybe the whole game is about traveling to Orlando and you know across the country again and it's meeting up with doctors there and then they're able to create a cure but it kills her and then that's the big resolution is that she saves humanity and uh, or it's suggested probably how they would do it is like ooh Ellie we can save humanity but we have to put you under for surgery and you you might not survive or what they say is like we're going to put you under for surgery You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, but we have to take the tumor out and then we can create the cure from that. And then like Ellie goes, okay, okay. And they put the mask on her and the camera kind of lifts up from her from the table. And the camera cuts to the doctor who looks at the other doctor. They nod. And then the camera goes black. And then you just hear the of this, this like deadline of the, or flatline of uh, the heart monitor. I think they would do that just to piss everybody off. <laughs> I think they'd do something like that. <laughs> yeah, if, it, well, if it cuts to black, I can manage that. That's bold. If it's a fade to black, I'm going to scream. <laughs> I think that's what they do. That would lose everyone. Exactly. The story's over, though, so who can be really that mad? <laughs> who can throw a fit? <laughs> if you're going to piss them off anyways... Go for it, man. <laughs> but like the doctors lied to her that she'd be fine. They knew that she was going to die, but they lied to her because they weren't going to miss this opportunity again. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good spot to end it. Thank you, everybody, for watching this Luke Stevens live clip. Appreciate you guys. Uh, subscribe and follow TikTok. And uh, yeah, end of clip. <laughs>